What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the extension Compo Spray from Didier Burr to create a shape using a bunch of random circles. And before we get started, today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Uh, Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, maybe consider supporting the show in the links down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the idea for this video came, I was out to dinner last week and as always, like any normal person does, I was sitting around looking at things and wondering how we'd model them in SketchUp. And what they had in this building is they had these light fixtures that were made of wood that had been bent in a circle circle and there were holes drilled in it kind of randomly so they were random sizes and locations and I wanted to use an extension in order to create a shape like that so in this case what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the extension component spray and so you can get component spray at the Sketchication extension warehouse. I'll link to that in the notes below. And basically what it does is it randomly places components in your model. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna model this flat and then we're gonna bend it with the extension true bend. So to start off, we're gonna start and we're gonna draw whatever our light fixture would look like if it was flat. So in this case, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle that looks like this. And so once I've drawn a rectangle that looks like this, what I'm going to do eventually is I'm going to drop a bunch of circles on this that are kind of random shapes or random sizes in order to create this effect. And so this is going to be almost like a canvas or a shape that we're going to place all this on. And so we're going to use the component spray extension in order to do this. And in order to do this, we need a circle that's in here as a component. So I'm just going to use the uh, circle tool and draw a little circle right here. And then I'm going to take that and I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna make it a component and we'll just call it circle and we'll click the create button. And so that's gonna make this into a component. Well now what we're gonna do, and the size doesn't really matter that much. I mean, it maybe matters a little bit. I might go in here and scale this down, but you can also set component spray in order to do that as well. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna activate the extension component spray in the first option here, which is top down and you can see that we're gonna get a number of different options. And so the options here are you can set your component and then you can also set where these objects are gonna go. And so in this case, I'm gonna set that I wanna spray the component circle. So that's the component I wanna spray and then I need to set where it's gonna go. So in this case, I'm gonna actually close this back out and I'm gonna select this face and then go back in here. And sometimes when I pull this up, this kind of looks like this and you can't see all the menu options. If you just drag it down and drag it back up, everything will show up just fine. So we're gonna select our first component, which is gonna be circle. And then we're gonna tell it that we want this to place this along the selected faces. So that's gonna be this option right here. And you can tell this what layer to put these on. We're also gonna adjust the pressure. So the pressure is gonna affect how many objects are placed on this face. So a higher pressure will place more objects, a lower pressure will place less. And then the last thing we wanna do, cause I'm not really worried about altitudes or steepness, but what I am worried about is the scaling. And so for the scaling, what I want this to do is I want this to, every time this places an object in here, I want this to randomly scale it up or down. So in this case, I'm gonna turn my lowest scaling down to 0.2. I'll turn my highest scaling up to 1.3. So that means this will go anywhere from 0.2 times the size of the existing object all the way up to 1.3 times that. And then once we've done that, we're just gonna go down here. I'm going to turn allow collision off. and then I'm gonna click spray. And what spray is gonna do is that's gonna drop all of these circles onto this face. And so you can see how when all these circles go onto this face, they all get dropped in here as components, which is what we want. And we're gonna have to go in and do some quick adjustment. But for right now, this looks exactly the way we want it to do. And in, and in this case, what I'm gonna do is I don't want pieces hanging off of the edge because I don't want that overlap to go on. So you can either erase the ones that hang off the edge or you can move them either way, but I'm just erasing these so they don't hang off of the edge of this object. So this one I may move up just a little bit. And so then the other thing you can do is in my case, I don't really want all of these to overlap the way that they are. So you can either use the move tool in order to adjust them so that they don't overlap, 
or you can just erase out your extra pieces and not worry about that. So that's kind of a style thing and that's what you can do. Just because I want these to all be kind of individual circles, like in the actual light fixture itself, these didn't overlap because you'd be kind of coring into the light over and over again. So we don't want them to overlap in here either because um, it wouldn't make sense when you made it with a drill bit. And I'm not 100% sure if there's a better way to do this um, so that within the extension itself. I don't think there is. But like I said, you could also come in here and delete these, but just remember that the more of these you delete, the less holes you're going to have making up your whole shape. All right, so that looks pretty good. I, I got most of them. And so now what we're going to do is we need to be able to basically erase these faces inside these ob this object so that this can be in here as holes. And so what we need to do in order to do that is right now these are all in here as components. Well, what we want is we want these to all be in here as faces. And you can see how these are all on this face already. So if I select them all, so if I just select everything and I right click and I click explode, what's going to happen is all of these are going to basically, what's going to happen is all of these are going to merge with this face. So if I erase one of them out, for example, you can see how that creates a hole in here. Well, there's a quick trick you can use to erase all of the faces of those really fast. So what you can do is because these are all on this face, if you double click off of one of these shapes, it'll select the face in between these. But you don't want to delete that out. Whoops. You don't want to delete this face out. What you want to do instead is you want to delete out all of these faces. Well, you can see how all of the edges are selected because I double clicked. Well, all you have to do is hold the shift key, click and drag a box across this, and that's going to deselect everything you had selected and select everything that you didn't have selected. Well, now you can hit the delete key and you can delete that face out. And you can see how there's at least one of these in here that I didn't quite get in here right. That's okay. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select this face and I'm going to push pull it a little bit. So whatever you think your thickness here would be. So in this case for something like this, maybe three quarters of an inch. And then I'm just going to triple click to select everything. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click make group. And now I'm going to use the extension from TomTom called True Bend. If you remember, True Bend allows you to bend a shape basically along the red axis. And so before I do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this object so that it's standing up. So now in this case, all we're going to do, because this tries to bend this along the red axis, is we're going to double click inside this object and we're going to reset our axes so that the red axis is running along the front face here. So I'll just hit the enter key, I'll set this so that the blue axis is up, and then I'll click outside this object. Now if I run true bend, it's going to allow me to bend it along this front face. So I can just click and drag this until we go to 360 degrees and just hit the enter key. When I hit the enter key, what that's going to do is that's going to bend this 360 degrees along this face. You can see I made this a little bit tall and you could either shrink this down or just be a little bit more aware of what you want this to be in the future. But you can see how this gets really easy once you start using an extension like component spray. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you find it interesting? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.